Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and today we're going to be taking a look at a selection of RX 7600 XTs. Now I've got three here for us to have a look at today. I've got the Power Color Hellhound model, I have the XFS Quick 309 and then I have the Sapphire Pulse Overclock. Now the MSRP for the cards is going to come in from £329 and I have had it confirmed by Sapphire that the card I have from them today is going to be is going to meet MSRP. I do not know about XFX and Power Color yet because they haven't replied, they've not given me any official pricing or anything at the time of making the video. I might add I'm making the video the morning of the NDA. So I've left it as late as I could do to hear back. The Power Color, I'm going to admit, as you'll see later, I'm going to hope this is an MSRP card. If it's not, then there's problems. XFX, because it's the quick and it's the 309 and it's massive, and when I say it's massive, like genuinely, it's so much bigger than the others that I am just going to say, I just hope it's not too much more expensive. Um, if it was 399, I'm not going to say that I would be comfortable, but I think it would be okay. But again, I don't know. If it was any less than 399, then amazing. If it goes above that 400 pound mark, then, you know, things are gonna to start to sting because we are down at a very um, competitive end of the market where every pound counts. It's not like when you, yeah, we'll just leave it at every pound counts. Now the biggest difference between the 7600 and the 7600 XT is it's now doubled the VRAM, so they've gone from 8 to 16 gigabytes. I actually think that's quite funny because if you didn't know, it's already been launched, but the uh, 4070 Ti Super, which I've not bothered to make a video about, uh, they've increased that up to 16 gigabyte of VRAM as well. Now the prices for those start from £799 and the one uh, that I have reviewed but it's just on the website, it's just a written review, that is going to be uh, 875 I think it was. So we're almost, it's fairly close, Top Gear Maths, these are a third of the price and we will just leave that there. Now we're going to cycle through the cards just so that we can get a look. Now, uh, you can go to the OC3D website, click through so that you can go in and see all the different pictures, the prices, loads more graphs when we get to the games as well. There's loads more that you can go and find there. Also, because I'm saying it, please like, subscribe, comment, talk to me underneath, all of the bits and bobs that we need to say at the beginning-ish so that we've covered it all. Now, the power colour. You'll see out of the uh, three, it's the only one with clear bladed fans. There are two of the fans as well, and uh, they light up blue or purple, or you can turn them off with the uh, LED switch. It is the only one that does have a six pin power on it as well, so you have an eight and a six. Um, there is a uh, BIOS switch here, goes from overclock too silent and I've tested it in the OC mode although I have tested both ways and you'll understand why I say that in a minute um, and it's a uh, plastic frame uh, heat pipes it looks all right do you know what I mean it's okay it's the only one with a black back plane bit which was one of the few positives I wanted to give it for the aesthetics the X effects is enormous it looks way more expensive than it should do. It's huge. Now, XFX, please listen, please listen to me. Um, because uh, recently I've not particularly been a fan of you putting all the extra silver stuff on the cards. Now, this is just plastic, but it looks nicer than the more expensive models that you've had recently with the silver wrap over the top. So if you make more expensive models later with other graphics cards, anything new that comes out, if you need to put a wrap over the top that's metal, please just anodize it black because the back plate, not being silver, I absolutely love. And it reminds me of the days when we used to have the really nice um, LEDs down the side and the white XFX light up logos. And this is just lovely. Uh, now, this does come with a BIOS switch as well, and we've left it in the performance mode rather than the silent mode. But you can see that there is two eight pin PCR Express connectors, lovely, lovely, um, and a really nice big 
fat heat sink as well with the uh, three fans on it. Now the other graphics card that we've got is the Sapphire. Quite a bit shorter than the XFX, but so shorter, as you can see, it does come out a little bit taller in reality though, but the uh, fans that are on this are slightly larger. But one of the things I will say about this is even though it's short, um, they if there's no overclock button on it or anything it just works out the box uh, i do like the fact there's a bit of color on it though the red touches on this do look nice and it's not the i, I want to say it's gamer it just looks like they've done a little bit more to it rather than leave it plain um, i'm also a bit of a fan of the fact that it's not got a silent mode because if i'm honest if you need to put your graphics card onto silent mode then you've probably picked the wrong graphics card because I don't think they should ever get to that point of being that noisy that it should matter anyway. Uh, I also think that, if I'm honest, with a BIOS switch, surely you should just be able to go in and set a fan profile up and it will act accordingly. Um, but, you know, we, we will park that there. So the difference between them in reality is two fans, three fans, this one's got LEDs. This one's definitely hitting MSRP, but let's bring up the uh, core clock graph because what you can see is you've got your rated, you've got your peak, and then you have your average. Now, the, the one to really pay attention to on this is the average because effectively what we do is we do, a, we do the same loop for 30 minutes uh, and we uh, track the uh, peak and the minimum and we make an average from it and we use that we use gpu z to track them all because gpu z you can actually go into the sensors and ask it to track what your average was and that's how we do it with these and if i'm honest i was a bit concerned about how low it was with the uh, power color to the point where i went in and flicked the bios thing over just to make sure that it was right um, but this one did consistently seem to be under performing when it came to the average clock. Uh, XFX was obviously uh, quite strong in reality and then the Sapphire, considering it doesn't have any switches or anything like that on it, was relatively strong. Um, you can see that the peak with the <laughs> Sapphire was higher than the uh, XFX as well, which goes to show that the overclock on the uh, Sapphire, just for straight out of the box, fit and forget, is pretty much spot on. Temperatures as well. It, when I saw the temperatures, I've got to admit, I got to the point with this where I was like, maybe that's in silent mode. So I flicked it and swapped it round, and it's not. Um, so that's just how it was. But this was pretty quiet in that, and I know this is at the point where people are going to say to me, ah, oh, yeah, but how quiet? But the problem is with the case fans, we obviously set our case up, uh, our test rig up as you would have it at home. Because if we turn all the case fans off so we can test how loud this is, then the fan speeds will go up because it's not being given cool air anymore. So that's one of the reasons why we test in a case, we test as you, you would have it at home, uh, because that's the fairest way for us to be able to do it. And if a graphics card was loud for me, I would tell you about it. And if I hear it, then something's not necessarily right. Um, but the uh, XFX was just like twiddling its thumbs. It was great. That was then second place. And then the uh, power color was the warmest, but it's not like it actually gets hot. None of them really get hot. It's just this one's got an enormous heat sink on it, which obviously helps it cool that little bit uh, better. Now, when it comes to performance, we've got lots of games to show you, but something that you do need to pay attention to in the graphs now is the mention of FSR because where possible we do test FSR but it's also the fluid motion frames because it's the first time within the drivers that we have been able to test it now all of the results are a ball lake to uh, test because we have to use AMD's own tracking software which is built into their software which is fair enough but normally we would use CapFrame X or benchmarks but for argument's sake Cyberpunk benchmark doesn't show 
the actual frames. Like the benchmark doesn't see the generated frames at all. So we have to use AMD's one. So we do all our normal tests and then I have to go back to do fluid motion frames. Now, there was a decent boost with FMF for all of the games, which is a lovely thing to say. But I will say that my experience with FMF um, was hit and miss because for argument's sake, cyberpunk, as I said, every time I moved the mouse in the menus, everything went fuzzy. Uh, Dying Light benchmark, for example, that was just, it, it was borderline making me feel motion sickness. There is quite a lot of motion blur when you turn it on. Now, I'm, I'm adding all this in for balance. I, when FreeSync first come out, like in its infancy, uh, it needed a lot of work. Now, they've proved that they can add the extra frames, but what now they need to do is now go and fix it so that is not a detriment to visual clarity. If you ask me right now, should I be turning it on, Tom? I'm going to say I wouldn't bother. But let's hope in the future they sort it out so that it isn't as visually... Uh, yeah, there's just too much of a negative... Um, impact so yes you get more frames but it's just not particularly nice and I don't think it's because of the one frame I actually think there's a, a compound issue that goes on there where it just needs to be kind of aligned slightly better but anyway the uh, results for it all are all in there and you can see we've not bothered with 4k um, if I'm honest with a 300 pound card with the way that we test, because we max all the games out as well, um, I don't think you would be buying one of these cards for 4K with AAA titles anyway. Sure, you're going to be able to go and play things like Modern Warfare or, um, you know, the, the, the less, uh, like Fortnite, you know, the less kind of strenuous titles, yeah, you probably will be able to... Uh, go 4k but I think if you're really going to be that worried about it maybe you'd be looking for higher frame rates rather than just going 4k with it it's going to really depend on you want at home but if your games that you play aren't particularly strenuous then yes you will probably be okay but for us to test it fairly with how we test all of the other games because we can't start adjusting settings just to suit it but I it just wouldn't have reviewed particularly well so as you've seen with some of the stuff that we've seen for 330 quid or there or thereabouts, depending on where the XFX slides in, it is an incredibly strong 1080p card, but it was when we tested it last time with the eight gigabyte. Um, although AMD did say that there were games, even at 1080p that were pushing past that eight gig. So that's fair enough. With the clock speed difference, with the extra VRAM, we have seen a reasonable amount of uh, extra performance gained. Uh, but I think really the, the extra VRAM is going to come for those of you that want to maybe slide up to 2560, 1440, uh, and go up that range with your monitor spec. And I think at that point, you're not necessarily going to be hitting 100 frames per second consistently over a wide range of games, but it is definitely going to be comfortably playable for you to be well above 60, like comfortably above 60 with the majority of your games at 1440p. And you're actually going to be able to have fairly high rates of um, AA and all of your, your bells and whistles, all those nice things. And I think for a... I don't like saying this is a low end card because I'm back in the day, like a mid range card would have been 300 quid and an expensive card would have been 600 quid. And now suddenly it's like a top end card is 1600 plus. It seems insane. But what I do think is the value that these bring to the table does make you question how much you really want to invest in your uh, gaming setup because unless you're playing with the whole, uh, like arguing with people over your spec list, are you going to get the same amount of enjoyment out of a game if you just want to play it? Um, because there is a difference between people that just play games and people that 
want the work of art on their desk. Now, I would say that there's a, an argument to say that you can have both because I do actually think that you could make something like this look quite pretty within your system and you don't need to go and spend three, four thousand GBP dollars on it. But obviously, if you end up spending hundreds of pounds on AIOs and RGB fans, should you not have upgraded your graphics card in the first place? So there's, there's very many debates that we could have, but if you just wanna play games, and I think this is a very comfortable, semi-future-proof place to maybe jump into and then see where your journey takes you later on. Uh, this would definitely be something that I would be uh, recommending people to maybe start with um, moving forward. And I think if you were to push me out of the three, I probably would, based on the pricing, say that price and performance is going to be the sapphire out of the three. And I think that if it was my money and I was trying to build something that looked nice and was going to turn into a statement piece on my desk, I would probably base my system around the XFX, depending on how much money it ends up coming in at. Any more than 400, I'd still go with the uh, Sapphire. Uh, if it comes in at 400 or less, I'd probably go XFX, just because if you vertically mounted that in a nice case with a nice air cooler on the top of it and had Rather than RGB fans, you could buy some of the Be Quiet Pro fans and have them dialed down, but put some LED strips in your case, maybe just white, you know what I mean, with some red cables or something. You could make this look incredibly pretty without spending obscene amounts of money. And now that I've thought of that, I want to build one and put it in the background. Oops. Let's stand it up. I wanted to say about the guy that always drops stuff, but I don't even want to go there. Um, the one for me which I was disappointed with in all reality was this one and uh, it just didn't seem to cut the mustard overall and I think when you put them side by side like this it's a really great way to be able to see the weakest link um, but if you want blue or purple fans which was obviously quite a strange one I think I would have probably preferred blue or red but each to their own and all that sort of stuff I think once you go purple it's a weird kind of colour choice in that like normally when you have people with the, the weird kind of color combos, pink seems to be the one rather than purple uh, because that's blue and red, not pink up at the back. So that's all the shadow differences, which is why I thought that might have, been, have gone that way. Um, I would also say that I actually prefer it when they do the white ones because I've had plenty of power color graphics cards in the past and the white one has light blue or white fans. And this is the uh, 7800 XT. Um, and I would have preferred to have had that with white as well because it just seems to suit more rigs than blue or purple. Um, it almost implies that you're going to buy that if you don't particularly, you just want lights rather than things matching. Anyway, I'm actually starting to waffle. So we're going to recap. I think for 330 quid, the Sapphire is an absolute uh, cracker of a little graphics card. And I think that is going to be the basis of many systems that are going to make people happy with their frames per second, the games that they're playing, and people are just going to enjoy playing the games rather than a 1500 pound graphics card, which is about looking at it more than the frames per seconds that you're actually getting. Um, and I think that's where these really come into their own. It's about the gaming rather than the spec list and uh, the um, super duper expensiveness about what you're looking at. So great place, not necessarily to start, but bang for buck is on point. And at that point, I'm going to bid you all farewell. Please don't forget to click through to the website if you'd like to go and see more of the graphs, more info uh, and also if you want to go and have a look at the 4070 Ti super review uh, that I didn't want to film. Anyway, for now at least, this is Tiny Tom Logan with another video for you. Out.